Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Do you have the full schedule leading up into the games or is it kind of? Kind of. Yeah. They're starting to piece it together. I think it's going to be like two, two and a half weeks out of each month leading up and then all of June and all of July and, and then the Olympics. So. And then we're also, which is kind of cool, we're bringing in some people to help us during training camp. So um, like some additional pitchers and position players that can help during inner squad. So we're not just facing each other over and over again. Oh, smart. Yeah. There's yeah. I mean, so many talented. Right. I, mean, I remember when we would scrimmage like the NPF all-star team, like I was mm-hmm. like, you just need to do this. Like, yeah. cause it was like so close. Cause I mean, right end of the day like there's so much talent you know and if you just Mm -hmm. take like a really good picture you know it helps you prepare you so much um okay so one of the things I wanted to ask you and I was reading in your bio that you know you never really dreamt about the Olympics because like in your mind um and this is what I was reading so correct me if I'm wrong but in your mind it just never seemed like it was a reality when did that change for you yeah that's true I I think it started to change um my sophomore year at Oregon, when I kind of had my quote unquote, you know, breakout year, um, started to learn how to hit away more. Um, and just kind of started to think like, okay, I think this, I at least want a tryout, you know, I at least think that I could deserve an invitation to the tryout. So that's when it started, um, for me, because my freshman year at Oregon was very much, you know, like a, average to above average season for a freshman. I started the whole year, um, dropped from one to nine and was just trying to turn over the lineup and, you know, slap the ball and put it in play. And then, um, you know, I just remember going home after that year and my dad and I were like, I think, you know, I just have so much more in me. There's so much more that I could be doing. Like I, I, I think I, I, there's no way to really know what the Pac-12 pitching is going to be like too before you're in it. And so just really, there's no weekend off and just taking all that information and then really trying to grow and, and seeing that come to fruition and being like, whoa, like I can really play now, you know, and compete with these girls. And so, yeah, I think um, my sophomore, junior year was really starting to like hope for that um, national team tryout. When you think about a lot of young girls that that are dreaming, but it feels like more just a distant dream. And, and obviously there's, it's more complicated now with when it's in the Olympics, when it's not as uh, simple, but just even being on the national team, wearing USA across your chest, there's that balance of like being confident enough to know that you could do it, but also that reality of just like, it's just, gosh, this is something that could I ever do it? So when you, you talk to a young girl that wants this, what what would your advice be? Yeah, I think that something that has shaped my career has been hard work and um, just trying to take the information that your experiences are giving you and try to um, just capitalize on learning um, and being coachable, um, but then also knowing what works best for you as an athlete. And then another thing um, that I feel like my dad has just instilled in me um, going into college, I remember there was just this idea of like, be so good that they can't ignore you. And so that was always my goal is like at Oregon, I just wanted to be so good that they couldn't not put me in the lineup. So that's been my mindset. And I've struggled on team USA even, and I've been on the bench in the gold medal game. And, and that was always what I came back to is like, I'm not going to make excuses. Like, Oh, if I had more at bats, I could have gotten myself out of the slump or anything. It's like, you know, the standard is just be so good that they can't not put you in the lineup. So that's what I've strived for. I love that. That's, that's so important. What, what has this last year been like for you? It's been crazy. Uh, much like I'm sure everyone could say, um, I think that I've, I've chosen to try to see the benefits of it. And I was even thinking this morning and it's been on my mind over the last couple of months of just thinking back to the hitter that I was even a year ago and how much I've even learned in the last year and how much I feel like I've improved and just trying to be grateful for the extra time um, that I get to feel even more prepared going into the game. So as much as, you know, it's, it's crazy that like, this is my seventh season on Team USA. And for some of the girls, it's their 10th. And we've all never been to an Olympics because um, it hasn't been in. And so 
I think it's a lot of buildup um, more than if it were every four years. But at the same time, um, yeah, just trying to see the positives of like, well, it's another year to try to peak at the right time. How do you handle the speculation? You know, I mean, I feel like every morning I'm waking up, you know, reading something different. You know, I'm, I'm supposed to go to Tokyo too just to cover it. And I, you know, I'm not even playing in it. And I'm like, you know, just on edge. Like, am I going? Am I not checking flights? You know, how do you balance that and handle it? Yeah, I, I think when everything started earlier this year, um, I would try to keep up with everything. And, you know, my husband is in baseball and all of that drama with the season. And I just kind of got to a point where I was like, I don't want to know anything until it's for sure. So I kind of, um, probably stay a little bit disconnected, but I have enough people around me that will keep me informed if there's something that I need to know about. But yeah, like this morning, even I had a good friend from college text me and like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I just heard about the Olympics. I'm like, what? And it was like this article that had come out last week that we had already dealt with. Um, but you know, she had just seen it. And so it's kind of, yeah, there's a bit of self-regulation that has to come along with it. Um, to not let yourself get too high, too low. And, and then there's also, you know, my parents and my family, just like you are, are trying to, you know, every week they're like, have you heard anything? Have you heard anything? And I'm like, nope, but you know, just trying to stay positive and, and hope for the best that, um, whatever happens that they'll be there to see it. And, um, and if not, we'll, we'll roll with the punches. I think if anything, if 2020 taught us anything, it's, it's that. <laughs> Yeah, you can't control it either. You can worry all you want. <laughs> yeah. And ultimately, what ends up happening is your family going to go? Like, I mean, is that something that they're waiting to hear about? Do they know anything of, of fans? Because I know that's something they were still talking about, fans being allowed. Yeah. Yeah, my, my family's planning on going, my parents, um, my sister, my brother-in-law, my nephew, um, my aunts, uncles, cousins. So there's a lot of people that are, that are waiting to hear about it. Um, and I think they had a press conference today and said they're still waiting on, you know, the final decision on if the general public can come or not. So still waiting on that. Okay. Um, so I want to, like, if there's a unique story, especially from this last year, when you kind of, I mean, everyone had to go into quarantine with training. When you think about Jake, your husband, you know, being able to, to be married to a baseball player, was there any kind of cool training stuff that you guys were, I mean, you think about it probably the first time in your marriage, able to do stuff <laughs> together um, because you both weren't gone in your seasons and respective crazy travel. Yeah, I think, in, you know, in the off season, we normally train at the same gym, um, but we normally don't train. I mean, he'll throw me front toss and stuff, but I would say like our sports specific stuff kind of stays separate. So there were a lot of, um, you know, early days. I just remember in March and April when everything first happened, we didn't know if we were going to get called back in a month or so and trying to stay in shape and go into the park. And I'm trying to play catch with him scared out of my mind, like, because <laughs> this ball just moves like crazy. And um, yeah, just trying to make it work without a facility and, and going to find a hill to do hill sprints together and, and doing that kind of thing. And I think that it was just a huge blessing for us to go through that together um, because of the insert uncertainty and not, um, and just kind of understanding, I guess, what each other was going through because it was really hard for um, some of my teammates even to be sent home um, from tour and just go home to your family that loves you, but at the same time, doesn't really quite understand what you're going through mentally, you know, and trying to transition. Um, and so it was just really helpful, even just mentally to have someone that knew exactly what was going on. Do you guys like hit together? Are there like fun drills or anything that you guys, even just like picking each other's brain? I don't know. Different yeah. mindset. Yeah, I, um, I really like to ask him questions about just like from a pitcher's perspective, because, um, and I offer my opinion, um, as a hitter, um, although like it, it, there are differences, but there are also a lot of similarities. So like my favorite thing is to go to his game and like just observe behind home plate and sequences and stuff like that. And then afterwards to kind of like tell him what I think and, and, and so we have like really cool conversations. Um, just as I've gotten older, I've gotten more into the game within the game and the chess match and things like that. And so, you know, early in my career, I was just like a 
see ball, hit ball type of hitter and didn't really focus too much on approach and all that stuff. And so as I've gotten older and it just, it's just fun, you know, that way to um, get more into that kind of thing. And so it's fun that we have that dynamic of like pitcher and hitter. Um, And he's, I keep trying to get him to learn how to throw BP, but he's just a little too wild. It's just, that's what I was going to ask, like, hitting the, <laughs> like I was picturing him throwing to you. I was like, I felt like I saw a video, but maybe I just imagined it in my head where he was like pitching and like, <laughs> you just like challenging him, but that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> no, no. And I've, he is nervous for me to stand in against him because he's like, you're so tiny. Like if I hit you, I'm going to break your wrist or something. I'm like, okay, good point. <laughs> oh man. I want this to happen though. We, we, <laughs> we need to make this happen. Even if it's just, I mean, you gotta I agree. It, like, I'll you just, react. yeah. Evo shield. I'll just yeah. be all armored up. <laughs> good, good. It's not like you don't want reactions. Like you got this. Exactly. Have him be from his distance. Like you'll have like a ton of time to react. It's like, this is nothing. <laughs> to um, tell me about Church on the Dirt and why it was important for you to, to have that and start it for others. Yeah, it's been awesome just to be able to do it with my teammates even. Um, and, you know, a big part was just growing up, um, going to church, but then as soon as travel ball started, just playing every weekend and not having that time with my family and um, realizing that a lot of people in the softball community were missing it too. And Um, I was coaching at Biola at the time in LA and um, just kind of voiced it to my head coach and she was like, let's do it. So we kind of started just going out to the field and um, actually the idea kind of came about around the same time that someone in the softball community, um, a young girl had taken her own life and um, just really realizing that there was a need. Um, And actually when I was in high school, um, a girl on my travel ball team took her own life and just being able to see uh, firsthand just the intensity that goes along with playing travel softball, trying to get a scholarship um, and all the pressures and the lessons. And it can be really overwhelming for young people. And so um, we just wanted to offer a place uh, that if you're interested and if this is something that you um, you know do in your normal life, but as you start to compete at a high level, you feel like you don't have the space or time for anymore. We just wanted to kind of form a community of, um, of people that could um, just had that thing in common and could, it could be a safe place for them. Was there um, also just as far as trying to, to reach girls in a variety of ways, which by the way, I love that you're doing in, in just the broader aspect of just instead of instead of, you know, being the softball player, of course, that they're going to admire, but all of the other things, your faith, your background, I mean, being one of very few, you know, Asian American, you know, softball players, is that something that, that you've found, you know, being able to relate to also a lot of young girls that can see themselves in you? Yeah, that's been, I think the coolest thing is, is noticing that a lot of my fans have been Asian American girls and not really realizing that I was representing, um, you know, a community of people by being on the national team and being half Japanese. Um, but then being able to, uh, you know, meet those girls and, and really see that, like they're seeing themselves in me. And that's just a huge honor for me. And I, I love, meet it. Like I still go and hit with my dad. My dad gives lessons every night of the week. And so I'll go hit with him whenever I'm in town. And, um, I get to meet his lessons or just at girls at the cages. And it's so special, you know, the grind that you go through like all those years in youth softball, um, never knowing if it's going to pay off. Um, and so I just, I, yeah, I love, I love meeting them and I love just telling them. Cause I remember one of my high school teammates, um, Caitlin Lowe is one of my favorites um, when I was in high school. And so I remember the national team was playing at Cal State Fullerton. I couldn't go. And one of my high school teammates got a ball uh, signed for me. And it said something along the lines of like, keep following your dreams or something. You know, it's like a simple line, but like coming from someone that I looked up to, it was inspiring to me. And so just remembering that like something very simple um, can be said to someone that just encourages them so much. And so, um, yeah, I, I can't believe that I get to do that, but, but it's, it's pretty awesome. It's gotta be kind of full circle in some ways for your family too, to have the Olympics, 
you know, be in Japan and knowing mm -hmm. your father and um, just, and he played, he played baseball as well. So I just feel like there's so much with this, um, you know, obviously we have a ton of family there, but how important in a lot of ways for you, it is the fact that it is going to be in Tokyo. Oh yeah. It's pretty awesome. And I would, I don't know that I would ever have gone to Japan if it weren't for um, playing for USA and going over there and playing as much as I have. And my dad's actually never been to Japan. Um, and I'm just excited for him, hopefully to get to go and eat all the food. Cause he loves like all of the native Japanese food and that you can't even tell what it is when you're looking at it. And, um, and yeah, my, my oldest sister, she's been once, um, but she just, all of us have, you know, we, we absolutely adored our Japanese grandparents and, um, and just like the culture that um, the Japanese people have is is really awesome. And so to be able to tap into, I think, like that side of who we are is really special to me. Awesome. It was, it was something I saw. I felt like it was maybe an inside thing that you guys were all tweeting about. Um, oh, gas. Florida. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag gas. Yes. Um, gas. I mean, I had like a million ideas. But I don't want to speculate. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a, it's an acronym. Um, and it came from Haley McClenney. Have you interviewed her yet? No, I'm going to let you ask her because I think she deserves to say it because it's pretty awesome. But, um, it, it, it was really cool though. Like when it came about, um, and so then we started to do the gas station before, um, practice where it's like, one person comes up with a question and we just all go around and answer the question. It could be, what do you bring to this team? Um, or where, where are you growing right now? Um, and I think it's just been really cool for us to um, just recognize that we could go a little deeper, you know, as a team and get to know each other a little bit more. And so we call it the gas station because we're like fueling up for practice um, internally. And then we're like going to go out on the field and just be able to like give it all we have. And so yeah, it's been cool to kind of have our own thing just like organically come about and to have like the whole team be really stoked about it and bought in, you know, that just like makes the whole experience so much better. Oh, I love it. Oh, that makes me so that's, I will definitely <laughs> ask Haley, but just the fact that you guys address that, because I'm telling you, like, that is the biggest thing to winning, you know, mm -hmm. you guys are all ridiculously talented. Like, so, that, right. you know, there's that. And, but to be able to actually come together through all the adversity that you guys have gone right. through, you have to get deep. You got to get real. Absolutely. You got to get to know each other beyond just what position you play and what college you went to and who you're dating. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> exactly. Janie, thank you for the time. Um, good luck. I'm really excited. I hope that I'll see you in Tokyo. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for taking the time to be the facilitator for all of this. It makes it really special.